the course of our lessons with title being sanctification personal on a household level on the church level and so on and so forth we are reading from Peter second the first letter to Peter chapter 1 Peter first chapter 1 and um, uh, chapter 3 va uh, rather Peter first chapter 3 and verse 1 wives in the same way be submissive to your husband so that if any of them do not believe the word they may be won over without words by the behavior of the wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as bread and wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes instead it should be that of inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight for this is the way the holy uh, women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful they were submissive to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear husbands in the same way may be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the wicked partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers I mean we are going to speak about uh, the sanctification of the household and of course again we say who are you is the first question I am the child of God is the answer weak and the least of all the brethren but I found grace by the Almighty God and I've been given a sister uh, and for someone who's married a sister someone who's believer in the Lord blessed children believers in the Lord blessed grandchildren faithful to the Lord and this is the grace of God in our lives this is what I am I am and I am as I'm as I use I am I, I use saying I am like an unleaded can a can without insulation but with the power of God I am I am a husband I am a grandfather I'm a brother in Jesus Christ because we have the same father in this church and the most important thing is uh, I'm also a servant of God in other words truly I am obedient to the Word of God and I am uh, a servant to them to the brothers and sisters the same applies for my wife my wife uh, also found grace before because the God gave her a husband that is uh, faithful to God the same applied with the children and grandchildren she is the, a mother a sister and a grandmother and also a servant of God a maid servant of God he and she is serving uh, the, the, the Church of Christ the second question is where are you very simple we are in the presence of God or at least we are trying to be in the presence of God that is why we have two characteristics that we need to have in a household the first is that we are praying together with the Spirit of God always so that all things may work for the benefit of ours because we are the ones that love God the ones that have been invited by God according to his eternal grace but is it is very important in the in the Christian household for all of us to be praying through the Spirit of God with the Spirit of God and because Christ has said to his disciples were you not able to pray for one hour with me this is what God loves dearly at least one hour within the 24 hour of a day for us to give it as a household to God and pray to him in the name of Jesus by the Spirit so that we may be able to continue on giving prayer pray, praise to God and find grace in the eyes of God 
and to also study the Word of God altogether. In other words, and I've experienced that in the beginning of my faith. When I first believed, we would go to the house of brother uh, George Fergus, and we were quite many. And he would speak, he would place, uh, he would tell to each and every one of us uh, to study uh, the Word of God, one by one. And this is where I learned about the Word of God. Not for the father to just talk and study. The father, the mother, the son, the daughter, all of us, all of them should be reading together. And the children should be able to confirm what the word of God is saying and explain what they understand. But firstly, we need to pray so that God may illuminate in us so that we may understand what we are reading. And especially Christ, to open up our mindsets so that we may understand what we are reading about. This is the household that will never fall away, that will never fall apart. Because they will be in the presence of God always. And we do thank God for it. Because... It's not of the one who's willing or the one who's trying, but it is up to the God, the God the Father. When, therefore, a person is experiencing in the answer where you are, he is in the presence of God. Very important as well in uh, family prayer to each and every one of us to pray individually uh, for the petitions of the whole household. Let every single one of them, of the people of, of, the, of, of the members of the family, to bring their petitions to God and for all other members to pray about these petitions. And this is bringing the communion, the unity that, uh, of the Spirit that is love. And that is also bringing the unity through peace that is given by the Spirit of God. This is a, a household that will never fall apart, no matter what happens to the world. Why? Because the king, the Lord, the teacher in this household, the Lord and teacher, the savior in this house is Jesus Christ. And the love between one another is being edified more and more. The peace of God is reigning in this family. And there are no fights, no issues. There's nothing that will cast and will drive the presence of God away. We pray to God, and especially you that are younger, you need to experience and live such, an, uh, such a household experience, an experience that you can create and you can uh, keep as a mother and father. By the grace of God, no one else has the power to do this for you in your household. Not even Christ, let me say that to you. Christ is happy to see you, is joyful in seeing you, living in His presence. And then He will bless you. And the blessing of God will be perfect and full. But you will need to seek, seek it out and you will need to, to, to ask for it first. And I had an experience on that. When I first believed with Brother Louis, he used to say, let us ask always from God every single day to give us a humble heart and a broken heart and a broken spirit so that God may live in us, so that we may be trembling in the eyes of, in the, in, in the, uh, in the presence of God, so that we may act to the detail according to the Word of God without adding or subtracting from it. And then I added also, as the years went by, Lord, also give me a heart according to your heart so that I may act accordingly to your will. And about a week ago, I was praying and I used to, I was speaking about all these issues and God came and said, is that all? Is there anything else you would like me to add? And I, and I'm always frightened when the Lord comes suddenly and visits me and I said, what else, Lord? 
he said something that I never thought about, even though I knew it, this verse. Learn from me that I am peaceful in heart, and then you will find peace in your heart. And I'm now adding this into my everyday prayer. Lord, please give me forbearance and quietness, patience in the Spirit, and the humility of Christ, so that there may be rest in my heart and in my household and in my life. Very important. And now the petitions now from five became uh, from four became five, but they are, it, it's just one petition in total. But now, what is important for us to understand is how each person, individual, acting in front of God. And always the word of God starts with the wife, because she is a vessel, a vessel that needs uh, special care. And the devil was able to uh, drive away the woman first, not Adam. Because God said to Adam to not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and bad. But he also confirmed that there's the fruit of life that is in the middle of the paradise. But a desire was born in the heart of Eve. What is that tree of the knowledge of good and bad that I'm not supposed to eat? by the order of God because we will surely die if we do because we will surely die the, is the, the first uh, scene you will surely die and Eve started to walk around that tree being near, being near that tree just to see what different is there with that tree what that tree has and why is the Lord forbidding them from eating from its fruit? But that was very important because she gave space to, to, to the enemy in the form of a snake to come close. Because she wasn't where she needed to be. The answer is with her husband. To leave, as we uh, read before, with knowledge for one another, for Adam to know where Eve was and for Eve to always be with her husband or know where her husband is. We're not supposed to do as we think in our household, as we uh, want, but the same applies to the children as well. We all need as a family to have one opinion, one mind, and we all need to be found upon the Word of God, only to the Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And she gave space to the enemy, and, she drew, and he drew near. And now he came and said, if, And if we don't have an experience to know about the ways of the enemy, we are easy. it is easy for us to fall into the temptation of his. May God give us wisdom and understanding, so that we may truly understand the pathways of the enemy, and may we be able to escape them. May God help us out. And immediately, uh, the devil asked. And she started communicating with, with, with uh, the enemy. And that is what he's trying to do, to just start chatting with anyone, with the man. That is why the Word of God says, be careful of what you're hearing about and how are you listening to it. What did you hear, Eve? And how was your heart when you were hearing these words? That was the issue. And what did the enemy say? Is it the truth? Is it true that the Lord said that you are not supposed to eat from the fruit of any of the trees here in, the, in paradise? And Eve paid attention and believed to the word of the enemy. Of course not, she replied. God told us to not eat only from this fruit, only from the fruit of this tree. And she added uh, something. And it is very important for us not to add anything to the Word of God. And she also said not to touch it. God never said this. Because we will surely die. And the road of this uh, communication, let's say, between the devil and the woman was just that. that and he said that he, God is lying. He is lying to you. You can eat and you will surely not die. But on the contrary, you will become wise. 
equal to God and you will know what is right and what is not right. And Eve, again, she listened and obeyed and, and she believed what she was hearing. And now she's paying attention to the tree. And she now sees that, she, that it has a, f a fruit that is desirable, a nice fruit that is pleasing to the eyes, the desire of the eyes, the desire of the, of the heart. And as if it is giving wisdom and understanding. And these three things, the desire of the heart, the desires of the eyes, and the desire of the things of this world, the I want, I think, and I desire, uh, made her uh, to reach out, take from the fruit, and eat. And the first uh, scene was created, was done. And her eyes were opened, and she saw that she was naked. But now she also took the fruit and took it to the husband. Look, I ate from it, and I'm not dead. It is, the Lord lied to us. God told us lies. I'm still alive. Look at me. But when God spoke about death, he spoke about spiritual death, the driving away, the drifting away of the person from God. And their eyes were open and they understood what sin is. And from that moment onwards, God couldn't let them in the paradise. And he casted them out so that they may not eat from the fruit of eternal life and live eternally in sin. And now the, word of, the work of God starts from there. And we can read through it, uh, through it. Uh, in Genesis and the whole Bible, we know these things and God is illuminating in us. Uh, something that is very important, a characteristic that is very important uh, in the Church of Christ is that the Church of Christ has an understanding of the Word of God and uh, revelation of the Word of God. Whatever you go outside to people that have studied uh, theological studies, scientists, and say, what is the rapture of the Church? They will look at you like you are out of this world. The Lord is coming to take us. What is he talking about? They will say, he's crazy, isn't it? The Lord is baptizing with the Spirit of God. They cannot understand these things. Even though they, this is the case, in the Church of Christ, even the smallest of children understand this. Not because our children or us, we are smart, no, but because our teacher is the Lord. And when he's teaching us, he's also opening up our hearts and our minds and we understand. Very important, isn't it? And now you will always see when the word of God is speaking about women and men, he, the word of God will always start with a woman because he is a vessel that needs Sp uh, special treatment, a weaker partner, says in verse 7 in, uh, of uh, chapter 3. But what we need to also reply is, who are you? Uh, as a husband, you are the head of the, of the house. And that is why the woman is supposed to subdue the, herself to the husband. And the husband needs to take care of the wife so that she may be uh, blessed in the presence of God. And the husband is blessed when her wife is in the presence of God. The glory of, of the Lord is the church, of Christ is the church. The church is the glory of Christ. And so it applies with the husband and wife. The glory of the husband is the wife. And why is the church the glory of Christ? Because she is the bride. And the characteristics are what the Lord confirms about, I am your brother, your friend, and your, bro your groom. The same applies for the husband to the wife. I am a brother to my wife, a friend, and a groom. And the same applies for the wife for the husband. These are the characteristics that we're talking about. But there's always uh, the the chance do you, the, the, there's always a, a case where the woman will be led astray and will make a mistake 
and take a husband that is not from God for her. Or he is not the one that God has foreseen for her. And I've told you about this before, and I'm going to say this again. There was a nice experience. A sister came to me many years ago, about 10 years or so, crying and said, Brother, I made a great mistake. What mistake have you made? I couldn't understand. I was married. I got married to someone that I liked, but it was not from God for me. It was, he wasn't the one. And I do not know what I'm supposed to do now. And I cannot stand him, and he cannot stand me. And I was in a very difficult situation. I was brought in a very difficult situation. What could I say? Uh, divorce him? What could I say? Stay? She cannot handle it. And indeed, as I couldn't reply, I said, we will pray so that God may reveal to us what we need to do. And we started praying every single night for this uh, couple. They didn't have children then. Every single night. Because I know and I believe that in all issues, God has a solution. In all problems, there's nothing, no matter how hard it is, that God cannot settle. There's nothing indeed. But now, we'll see something, that, that there was nothing to be done. There was nothing good for God to work with. And I remember one night, I saw a dream that I have actually experienced when I was young. My uh, father was a farmer. And Marusi was just a village back then. People from Athens came uh, for vacations. They would rent a house for a few days just to, to, to uh, for vacation purposes. I was eight years old or ten. My father decided to, ha to teach me how to be a farmer. And one of the most difficult things was watering the plants. Because we had a well that the, the water was streaming out of and there was a specific, a special technique to uh, bring the water down to, to the plants. He called me knee and he showed me once and twice how I'm supposed to do it and I said, I understand it. Third time I said, I understand it now. And he said, yes, okay, I do it. Of course I, I was eight and ten years of age and I said, I'm not going to do it that way. I will do it even better and even quicker with less effort and I decided to do what I thought was right and of course the water spilled out and uh, the, the whole path was destroyed and I had no solution for it and I screamed out and I said father he was on all the way to the other side of the yard come I screamed out because the water spilled out and he came laughing and uh, we were friends with my father. It's very important. Let me put up a parenthesis here. It's very important for the father and mother to be the friends of the children. Just like, the cri cri just like Christ wants us to be friends with him, the same applies with the family. And you are becoming the friend of Christ when you are doing as he commands. And the father becomes a friend with the child when he sa never says no. And when the child uh, obeys the father, they become friends. And he said to me, did you do it as we said? And I said, yes, of course. Of course, I lied. He laughed because he understood and he just did w with one action. He just moved his hand and he was able to rectify it. And now in my dream, I understood. And I said, if my father in this earth, it was so easy for him to rectify my mistake, something that I couldn't rectify myself. If it is that easy for my father on this earth to do it, how much easier would it be for my father in heavens to rectify things that I made, that I was mistaken about? And I called that woman, uh, that wife, um, next morning, and I said to, to, to her that you need to go to Christ because He can rectify all things. Go to Christ. And years went by. She is now. We never spoke about it again. And they are happy now, and they have two children, blessed, holding in the presence of God. Because when you call your uh, Heavenly Father in your life and ask Him to rectify things in your life, He will do it because He is powerful. He is almighty. There's nothing impossible to Him. Is there anything impossible to God? 
Is there something that God is not able to do? And the the woman therefore could, made a mistake, and she made got married to a husband that is not obedient to the word of God, or he was a believer now fallen away, or he was never a believer, he was not obedient to the word of God, and because he liked her, he faked or he said that he would become a believer or he would follow God but he eventually did it, didn't and now we see how uh, the women are supposed the wives are supposed to act it says in verse 1 in chapter 3 wives in the same way may be what may same way be submissive to your husband so that if any of them do not believe the word there may be one there may be one over that doesn't apply to the full word of God on, only but it could apply to a specific part of it they don't understand it or they're not, they do not want to act on it. But even if that is the case, without words, by the behavior of you, of the wives, they can be won over. And that is the best um, message that a wife can bring with their behaviors. When they see, says in verse 2, your husband that is not obedient to the word of God or a believer in Christ or in a specific part of the word of God, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives, they will be won. They will be won over. It is beautiful for the wife to be holy in her household. Someone who is set apart from the the world uh, by God. The wife that has the gospel of God in her hand and is always walking accordingly to it, she will be able to win over her husband because of of her of, of the behavior that she has and the reverence but now we are entering into a very important uh, issue and that is the outward adornment of women because many times we're hearing this uh, being said the outward uh, image has nothing to do with God only the inside is what God cares about. Only the inner person is what cares about. But that is a false doctrine. The person of God, firstly with his outward appearance, he shows that he is different. He shows that he is from God because he is pure. He is clean. He is humble. Therefore, the, your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair, nice haircuts, and wearing of gold jewelry, bracelets, and all that, and fine clothes, expensive clothes. That's not what you were supposed to be dressed with, or that shouldn't be the adornment that you should receive your beauty from. Because if you are not as God wants you to be, you bring, you bring a scandal into your household. But if you are according to the word of God, you'll be able to win over your husband through these things. But what is the beauty? And it, where the beauty comes from? It says in the verse 4, instead, it should be that of your inner self. Something that people do not see. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. This is the adornment of the woman. The, uh, the adornment of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. You, as a wife, you're supposed to be gentle and you're supposed to be quiet. You're not supposed to groan and uh, demand. You're supposed to be gentle and quiet. Firstly, um, rather, why? Because this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful as they were submissive to their own husbands as in verse 5. With your adornment, of your inner person, you are bringing forward your submission to your husband. You're not trying to uh, to reel, uh, reel him in or win him over with your outward appearance, but with your inner person, 
of course, we're not supposed to be dirty. You're not supposed to uh, have an image that is that is not good. Of course, you're supposed to be um, have a respectful and a um, a uh, and and pay attention that your clothes are washed. Let's say you're clean. You have good clothes. But most importantly, w the, the thing that you would win your husband's over with is your inner person, as we said before. The reverence, the quiet and gentle spirit. Sister, what you n your adornment is for you to be fully submitted to your husband. To be submitted to your husband with that quiet and gentle spirit that we talked about before. Just like Sarah, as an example obeyed Abraham and called him, called him her master. And you are her daughters if you do what is right. And we are the sons of Abraham because through uh, Abraham, Christ was born and we are now born in Christ. And therefore, women and men are born in Christ and are born in Abraham. And for the women specifically, you are daughters of Sarah, if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. And the woman has more spiritual power than the man, because she will not give way to fear. She's not afraid, because God will be with her. But the man will lose his courage sometimes. But the woman will never lose it, uh, her courage. And the main characteristic, uh, an example is, imagine if the man would go through the pains of the labor that the woman is going through when she's giving birth. We as men could not go through, and we cannot cope with that pain. The house, in other words, is basically based upon the woman who is the manager of the house. Apart from taking care of the children and taking care of the house, she, she has the management of the house. She has the authority of the house. Not, not the authority of the husband, but the management of the house. She is able to manage her children in the household because the husband mostly uh, because he's working away, he's away from the from, uh, from the house, and the responsibility falls upon the wife. And she is being saved through the giving birth to children if they stay uh, believers uh, in Christ. If both of them, the woman, the, the the mother and the children, remain in Christ, and how can that be the case? If they build upon the rock, because if they build upon the sun both the, the, the woman and the children will be lost, will be falling away eventually because the rivers will come, the winds will come, issues will come, the rain will come down and the house will fall. Any house that is built upon the sun. But the woman that is building her house on the rock, all these things will come, but she uh, will not be moved. But that's not all. The women that are building upon the rock are supposed to build with gold, silver and precious stones, not with wood, hay and straw, because the second type of trial is coming. The first one is flooding that uh, came to Thessaly the, uh, many months ago, if we, you remember, but also through fire. And the women's work will be tested by fire. And if you have built your house with wood, hay and straw, the only certain thing is that your work will be um, ablaze, will be burned and nothing will remain. Because you have set your, you have built your house on the rock, but not with uh, gold, silver and precious stones, you will be saved, but through fire. Just you'll be able to escape uh, in the nick of time. These are the beautiful characteristics of the, and the secrets rather, of uh, the Word of God for a blessed household.
for the husbands now, things are different, I could dare say. Husbands, as in verse 7, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives. You need to communicate and understand what your wife is doing and is going through. And the same applies to the wife towards the husband. You're supposed to be, live in a considerate way with your wife. Eve would go wherever she pleased without Adam knew, knowing about it. She was driven away and uh, fooled because of it. And I, re I repeat, the Word of God says, Brothers, friends, and then bride. We have the same Father as, as brothers, friends. We know all things because God is revealing them to us. Uh, Christ is revealing them to us and then bride because you are the bride of the groom same applies to the husband and wife we as a family are brothers in Christ what does that mean? it means that we are reborn we are baptized with the spirit of God the husband is loving the wife because she is a sister his sister but as, the, as Christ says about the church, I'm not calling you servants anymore. That is why we need to pay attention, brothers and sisters. Uh, the husband is not acting as if the wife is a slave. No. He is not casting orders around. He's not barking orders. But with love, with consideration, he's acting. And it's not bad when the wife and uh, the wife and the husband are talking to say to one another thank you please yes they're not they're not casting orders it is forbidden for the husband to be harsh against the woman but instead he's supposed to to live with the wife with love understanding consideration husbands therefore in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives know exactly what they need the wives need what he needs to do to help her out and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and that is why you're supposed to help out your wife the husband is what he is a, a father a husband and a servant you are supposed to help out your your wife as much as you can because she is the weaker partner but also at the same time she is an heir with you of the gracious gift of life but pay attention to this the gracious gift of eternal life yes indeed but the gift of life down here on this earth because we are living by the grace of God on this earth and that grace is our inheritance the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Spirit. We are, therefore, heirs of God. And the heirs of, heirs of the gracious gift of life that is given to us through Jesus. And there's a great result to this. Amazing, I could dare say. Your prayers are listened to. Nothing is hindering. And I said this before, I'm going to say this again. We are married now with uh, my wife as believers and married 40 years. There's not one prayer that we have taken a decision to go together and pray with and bring the petition to Christ. Not one. That God, and God can confirm this in my wife, and God always answered. And He did greater things than what we asked and petitioned for. Why? Because truly... We are not flattering. This is the grace of God. We, I'm not sweet-talking Anna, my wife, and she's not sweet-talking me. But that is the life that we're supposed to live. We are the heirs of that gracious gift of life. And as a result of all these things, are, nothing will be hindering our prayers, and God will do much more than what we ask for or think about but always according to the power of the Spirit that is acting in us. My wife needs to be filled with the Spirit of God in a personal life, in a personal corner, 
in uh, pr uh, praying corner, but the same applies also to me. And the result is a truly blessed household. Now imagine, brother, how good it is for you to know that any petition that you might be having for your children, for your household, for your professional environment, I remember once, I was in a very difficult situation. Without being in fold, I had signed, I have signed things that I wasn't supposed to, or I was, I, I signed things that uh, came back at me actually, and I, w I just believed. And I took an and before I left for my uh, job, uh, we went to my pr to my we went to our room and we prayed and we said, Lord, we are gonna die. We 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 won't be able to survive this. And God filled us with His Spirit and said, Body of Christ, you are. Who can harm you? And I left and I went to my job. The other two uh, people that signed along with me, they were destroyed already. They have all signed the same thing. And they were terrified. And I said, do not be afraid. God will find a solution. And they will look at me and they will think I'm cry I was crazy. And indeed, a great miracle happened. Very quickly, I'm going to go through it. There was a great difference between uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And we would uh, take a loan. And what God did was amazing. The uh, God made it so that the that the the ones that were the, the ones that the um, the people that were buying were able to quickly come in and pay cash so that they can may receive the the, the bottlings. And God is my con is is conf can confirm that in my wife, and that stayed with me, because I was saved because of it. No one can harm us. If God is with you, who can be against you? This is the great secret. And, and you may say that these things are difficult to understand. Yes, but. I am saying these things not for you to believe what I'm saying, but for you to for me to show you that the relationship with your husband and the relationship with your children and the relationship with your wife are the ones that would um, make the presence of God known in your life. But we're not going to go outside the word of God, of course, because my wife never asked me more than what I uh, more uh, more than she should. We would always buy with. Uh, we would always uh, buy when the prices were low. We would always pay attention to our financials. What I'm trying to say is that the relationship with between the husband and the wife always needs to be in the presence of God, so that they the whole household may be in the presence of God. And my children had an example, and they now saw. That the prayers of uh, of of the uh, of the father and mother I, repl I replied to, and I said to my children, uh, bring your petitions, write down your petitions, and get them to to the fridge, and we will pray for them. We're talking about four children now, four different piece of papers. And my elder said, I'm not going to do that. And I said, No, don't do it. Okay, as you wish. But he would see his sisters do it, writing, and uh, and um, and the Lord would reply, and and they would erase the petitions, and suddenly uh, I see him uh, taking a piece of paper, and he wrote down all his petitions. He wrote down all his petitions, and he brought them to the fridge. 
because he saw that all the petitions of his sisters were replied. That's how we learn. You know why? Because the first uh, sermon that I heard about is seek and you shall find, ask and you shall receive, and knock. That was the first message I heard. Knock and it will be open to you because only the one who seeks will find. The one who asks will receive and the one who knocks, the door will be open to him. And I said, is this the truth? Is that said by the word of God? Is that confirmed by the word of God? If I ask, God is going to reply. And I was founded upon it. And that became the base, the first one, in uh, the beginning of my uh, spiritual life for me and my wife. And we were uh, reborn right after that, baptized in the word, and our life moved on. My dear brethren, it's very important the relationship between the man and the wife to be in Christ and the relationship between the children and the, the, the parents to be again in Christ. What does that mean? You will never say no. If you ask my children, my grandchildren, children, uh, is, your, uh, your, is your father never, ever saying no? I never said no. But you're also te teaching them to not ask for things that are out of this world or not proper. Things that can be done and things that are proper according to the Word of God. And that will create a unity, a blessing that when we pray all together, we were six people uh, in total, then whatever we asked for, God did gr more than what we asked about. The most important thing, and I'm concluding with that, is my my father and my mother are saved. And my mother was greatly against all these things. But she was saved by a miracle. I'm going to go through it again. Uh, but I remember my father, one day before he died or two, he thought that I was uh, I was uh, sleeping, but I heard him. I was I was up, and I heard him praying. I finished my mission, Lord. Come and take me. And my mother-in-law would take would take care of it, would take care of my father-in-law every single day. But when he died, he entered the church and never left. The word of God says, and I'm finishing off with that: Believe in Christ, and you will be saved along with your household. Surely, as long as the the faith is for you, a faith that leads you to obedience to the word of God as you are submissive to the Word of God. And we'll continue on next Monday by the grace of God with the other characteristics of the man and wife and we will eventually reach down to how the children are supposed to be brought up in Christ. Amen.